Hello everyone, uh, thank you for having me here. So, uh, originally this talk was supposed to be about uh, our migration to the Google Cloud platform in 80 days, and that would be like today if we started around Christmas time. Uh, we started around Christmas time, but we are not uh, there yet, so I'll be talking about our journey there at least. But uh, do you know us? Maybe some hands, who knows Exponia? Oh, well, okay. Okay, that's even better than I thought, okay. So, uh, we are, this is our new branding, it's Exponia Experience Cloud. And uh, we are doing uh, real-time uh, personalized omni-channel campaigns in, and this kind of stuff. Also, uh, pretty, pretty good AI and machine learning stuff. Uh, it's, it's generally about predictions and uh, of, uh, recommendations and, and those kind of stuff. Also, it's, it, it's really it's real-time. So uh, when you get some events from, from the client's, uh, client's web or something like that, uh, you can trigger your campaigns. And it really l looks awesome and also it works awesome. Uh, not always, but pretty much all the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next, what, what Exponia was? Exponia was a really a hardware based uh, system, I would say. Uh, in hardware, we had something like uh, 150 servers, and those consisted of uh, more than 2,000 CPU cores. Oh, the numbers are not there. Okay, uh, 2,000 CPU cores, and uh, the RAM was around 40 terabytes. 40 terabytes RAM, and the RAM we need because we are running the databases in memory. Uh, that's one, one of the reasons why our application is, is so great and fast. The databases are in memory. Uh, so, uh, if we want to uh, take this, this huge system and move it to Google, uh, it would not be really practical in, in that matter like lift and shift style. So, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 this, this is the one. Yeah, also uh, more, more than 50 virtual private servers in uh, AVS and also before in, in Google, so okay, this stuff. So, uh, the thing we can make uh, our, our uh, system even better is to use containers. Uh, we decided this way because our, our uh, system already was consisted of uh, uh, many smaller services, but they ran on the hardware. So uh, the, the best way to, to make it better was for us to, to move it to containerized platforms, so uh, where should we put them, we asked, about in November, maybe December. Uh, the, the discussions went in our team and uh, we decided for Google, Google Cloud Platform, and the main reason was because uh, they, they have uh, uh, this Kubernetes support, that is really like Kubernetes is the thing that they think. So uh, it was uh, really the, the, the only option we, we could think of. Uh, next, AVS uh, surprised us because they uh, just released uh, their uh, Kubernetes support uh, like two months ago or something like that. Uh, it's still in beta, but okay, we will see. And also we, uh, we uh, considered also running our own uh, Kubernetes platform and uh, on, on bare metal servers. And we probably will eventually also do that, but it's, it's for other talk. So why Kubernetes? <clears throat> you can run your con con containers also in Docker, don't you? Yeah, you could, but Kubernetes is much more uh, flexible, I would say. 
also uh, if we wanted uh, really use this flexibility and scalability <coughs> uh, the <coughs> uh, the docker would probably not suffice uh, so we, we, we choose uh, Kubernetes and also it has really awesome documentation. It, it's really easy to, to, to set up when uh, you actually read the documentation. Uh, also, yeah, everybody knows Kubernetes, I, I think. Uh, and wh why GCP? I was talking about this actually. Uh, uh, we found it really easy to use. Uh, like everything worked for us from the start. Well, so, so we decided to use this. Uh, all, also, uh, for for the automation purposes, we are using uh, uh, not not the automation, the automation of uh, deployment. I would say the the the, the GCP. VPSs for, for this stuff. We use uh, Terraform, and uh, we also find out that Terraform is really, really greatly supported in, in GCP, and uh, it really like worked out of nowhere, just run it, and, and it, it does its job, so it was really awesome. Also, uh, GCP has uh, really great, great uh, other their native features, uh, like like the, the the storage or or the uh, all the all the things like uh, uh, well, our our AI team is is using pretty many of those features. Also. Uh, uh, big, they they uh, tried big bigquery and and this kind of uh, their things and yeah okay so our our AI team really likes GCP also but um, yeah like in, in the beginning like I was saying uh, are we in Google yet uh, well the the answer is uh, nope. Not, not really. Uh, th this was our migration plan, by, by the way. Uh, pretty, pretty complicated stuff. <clears throat> well, uh, but the, the, the reason we are not in uh, Google yet is because we need to make really great architectural changes in the, in the application. Uh, uh, actually, we are running. Uh, uh, some instances of our application in the containerized form uh, in the Google Cloud uh, as we speak, and also we are testing it, but it's not really production ready yet, but I think in, in, in a few weeks it will be, and it will be really, really awesome. So, uh, well, maybe we will see in PyCon, uh, in, in Prague, in June, July, I don't know, maybe come there, I will tell you more. Okay, automation. Uh, I, I, I chose uh, Terraform logo there, but uh, as, I, as I was saying, we are using Terraform uh, now uh, just to uh, deploy the servers. Uh, also, uh, um, in the Google Cloud, and before we were using it also in AVS, it was, uh, uh, we found it really useful, and also like infrastructure as a code is really the thing we want when we will need to um, manage system that uh, originally was like 150 servers, but uh, as, as the Exponia is growing and the, the user base is growing well, uh, the, the resources are getting larger. Uh, yes, in the containerized environment, we will not be using uh, really like the, the VPSs as, as we know them, but more like the Kubernetes nodes and uh, the containers will be inside of those nodes and the, the Kubernetes system, but uh, we will still need some some kind of 
infrastructure as a code uh, to, to manage those nodes. Uh, also, yeah, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we still haven't f figured out this just yet, but uh, very promising uh, is uh, GitLab and their uh, CI/CD uh, pipelines. We are using them, but uh, yeah, I, as I know, the AI team is using uh, this also for for making their containers for the Kubernetes platform, and uh, actually they they were the the first uh, team in Exponia to actually. Uh, use uh, Q Kubernetes as uh, as the main yeah, the, the platform or, or subsystem for, for their things. Before they were using uh, Hadoop and Spark and those kind of stuff. Now they are using the, the native uh, Google Google uh, services, and uh, it, it looks really promising. It's in production, so the, the, the AI stuff is in Google, and it is in production, to, to be clear. Uh, also, Ansible, yeah, everybody knows Ansible, probably. But uh, this was primarily used for, for uh, uh, deployment of the, the services to the servers, and also for all the, all the applications we, we wrote, and everything was managed by Ansible. Uh, in Kubernetes, it will probably change, but uh, we probably still need, uh, still be needing something like Ansible, maybe something more managed like Ansible Tower or, or some of those stuff. It's really awesome. Yeah, like I was uh, talking, oh, what the hell, okay. Uh, yeah. The, uh, if if you read the the, the thing for for my talk, you uh, could find out that I I put there this uh, or or did we think, and this is because uh, when uh, I was uh, asked to to prepare something for for this PyCon, it was uh, like two months ago and. Uh, uh, I was uh, positive that we will actually uh, be uh, in, in Google like 80% or more, but uh, we are probably about 20%, so still not a big difference. But yeah. <clears throat> Well, so uh, is it even worth the effort to, to change our infrastructure when it was wor working? Well, it, it was working. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, like uh, the, our our systems were stable enough to uh, be running continuously and to to suffice our clients, right? So, mm, uh, if it's working, don't touch it. No. No, uh, we wanted uh, to make this change, and uh, the reason is yes. <laughs> okay, the, not the reason. Uh, the reason is because uh, uh, the the hardware servers are not that scalable as we may think. Like, okay, uh, you have data center and. Uh, uh, you just send email to some guys and tell them, okay, we need two more servers. They say, okay, it will be five hours. You said, okay, we need them like now. And they say, okay, two hours. So uh, this is not the scalability we are looking for. Uh, so we decided to go the, the, the cloud way. Uh, so Google Cloud Platform was our first uh, first option, and we take it. Uh, also, flexibility, that is also the stuff I was talking about. Uh, but the, the, the main reasons, uh, less time spent fixing. That's really true, because uh, if, if you have like really uh, large number of hardware servers, and uh, you need to take care of them, so uh, a disk fail, okay, they will change the disk, but you, you need to rebuild the RAID, yeah? So, and this, this kind of uh, 
uh, I would say operations was probably like 30% of uh, the whole DevOps work we were, we were doing. And it, it's not really effective. Uh, in the cloud, uh, you don't have this overhead. So that, that's the main reason. And also the 30% the you, uh, uh, you, uh, you are freed from, from, from fixing your stuff. Uh, this 30% can help you in, in uh, uh, better development of, of the applications or, or uh, making the, the platform more, more stable or more, more scalable. Also, the, the costs, I, I don't, didn't put the costs there, but uh, our, uh, our main uh, expense on the hardware was the RAM. Uh, because when you have servers with RAM, the RAM is uh, really, really expensive. Also, in the cloud, the RAM is also expensive. But uh, in, the, in the Kubernetes, you can actually uh, just use uh, just the RAM you need. So uh, uh, the, this also can help us because uh, when, when our database servers uh, need 100 gigabytes of RAM each, okay, uh, you need to buy servers that has 250, probably 256, and uh, uh, the, the RAM usage just rises, so if you hit some level like 200, it's still okay, 250, not really okay. Uh, so you need to buy more servers and, and this kind of stuff. But when you are lower, uh, like uh, say when I was saying the, the 100, uh, you still mu must buy the larger servers. Uh, in Kubernetes, you can just uh, tell the, the containers that, okay, your limit is there. Uh, when, when the container is, is uh, rising uh, to, to that limit, you can still hire the, rise the limit and you are okay. Also, the, the, the resources of the Kubernetes cluster are shared, so that's, that's one of the reasons we, we wanted it. So, is that it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it. So, thank you very much. Uh, I, I was not really technical, but uh, uh, we have more talks. Also, uh, my, my colleagues, uh, I think today around one, they have a workshop just about how to use Kubernetes for uh, highly available applications. So, if you are interested. Okay, we have questions uh, on Slido. So the first question is why Kubernetes and no OpenShift? Yeah, yeah that, that's a really good question. I was asking it also. Uh, uh, I like OpenShift. I was using it uh, also we, uh, in, in, during, during my, my studies and I, I played with that. But uh, uh, for us, it just looked like uh, the really nice overhead that they put around Kubernetes. So uh, uh, we, we think that Kubernetes is just enough. Uh, also, yeah, in, in Google Cloud, you don't have OpenShift, you have uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, and it's uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, not OpenShift, so that's the main reason, probably. Uh, or any... Uh, okay, uh, so the next question. Uh, how do you prevent data loss because you are using in-memory databases? Oh, yeah, uh, well, um, uh, well, the, the in-memory databases are ephemeral, as we know, so uh, uh, they are used uh, for the, the, well, the really fast operations. Uh, it's well the, the system we are using. It's it's more like a compute engine uh, around uh, in-memory database. It's not just the database. It's all in-house solution and uh, and it's really fun. Uh, but uh, we also use uh, other databases that uh, backs up the data. Uh, so when if God forbids the 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 in-memory database. Uh, just died. Also, we have replicas, of, of course. Uh, just died. It's it's still possible to to load the data, uh, and uh, we made uh, uh, some some 
uh, yeah, optim optimization in this, and it, it's possible to to load the whole, uh, for example, nine. Uh, what, what what is this? Yeah, two terabyte database. I don't really. No, it's it's yeah, two terabyte database in something like ten or fifteen minutes. So not not that huge uh, huge loss. Uh, also, yeah, there, there are really two replicas uh, each time. So. Yeah, the, the, yeah, mainly the data loss is uh, uh, pre prevented by using uh, other backup database that that's not running in RAM. Also, we use we use Kafka for for the lo loading process, so it's fast. Okay. Uh, next question: What did you do? Plan to do with the 150 decommissioned physical servers? Yeah, uh, we still have a bunch of them, but we decommissioned the the uh, most expensive ones first. Uh, yeah, they are not ours. We are uh, leasing them from from a uh, physical cloud provider, and uh, so they just disappeared from our invoices. It's simple. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you run stateful services in Kubernetes? If yes, what do you think about it? <laughs> That's a really great question. So, uh, if if you know know uh, Google a bit, they say they running everything in containers, like really everything. Everything you look in a Google runs in a container. Uh, so this should not be a problem. Uh, uh, well, we. We are ready to run stateful databases in Kubernetes. Uh, also, uh, we uh, we have them in testing the the whole system. Like the whole system is Kubernetesized now, but uh, it's not in production yet. We are testing it still. Uh, but it, in in first year, the, the the stateful stuff and databases uh, uh, were uh, just on the VPSs. Uh, Besides the, the Kubernetes cluster, of course, for, for the primal test. Okay, uh, next questions. What are your use cases to deploy and use Kubernetes on premise instead of cloud? Yeah, uh, primarily uh, legal restrictions, I would say. Uh, because uh, in, in, in some countries, uh, they don't really like uh, cloud services. So uh, the the data of uh, their citizens must stay in in the country, and with cloud services you don't really know where the data is. So uh, the the, the on-premise uh, installation would solve these kind of problems, um, like really running in the country uh, on on some lealized uh, hardware and some um, physical cloud provider, let's say, and. Uh, yeah, but 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 with uh, use of Kubernetes uh, that is standardized, uh, we can pretty much re replicate the uh, the infrastructure we are using in the Google Cloud everywhere else. We just need to uh, provision our own servers and Kubernetes nodes and this kind of stuff. So a little bit of overhead, but for legal reasons. Uh, we probably can't do anything else. Uh, okay, uh, the last question. You don't have implemented CI CD, so you run Terraform from your local PC? Oh, uh, well, actually, we, we do. Uh, and uh, uh, we also proposed uh, to change this because it, it's not really uh, probably the best thing to do. Uh, but uh, with Terraform, uh, it's kind of easy to run it from your machine and not to kill anything. Uh, also, the, the Terraform states uh, can be uh, baked in, uh, in something like uh, S3, in uh, uh, AVS, or, or this kind of uh, stuff also in, in storage in GCP. So, uh, we are now working like 10 people, maybe six or 10 people on it, and 
there was no problems with, with running from local machines yet, but we are planning to, to do it uh, centralized or yeah, out, 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 automation stuff. Okay, so time is up. Uh, thank you for your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.